Well, welcome everybody to this last session of the symposium. Uh, we will be talking with two esteemed colleagues here today about using a collaborative action model to ensure data-driven decision-making in Haiti. Um, I am pleased to be here with Naji Joseph, who is the Deputy Chief of Party at DAI Global Health, um, where she joined DAI under the USAID-funded Haiti Strategic Health Information System in September 2019, after seven years of working in PMT PMTCT surveillance. And prior to that, Naji served as the National HIV AIDS Surveillance Manager at the National Alliance of State and territorial directors in Haiti. Naji was born and raised in Haiti and is a trained medical doctor and also has a master's in health administration. We are also joined by Rudy Thermidor, who is the deputy director um, and a specialist in population and development with 10 years of experience in developing and implementing health information systems. Um, during his tenure at the Ministry of Health in Haiti, he managed the deployment of DHIS2 as the national system for data collection and reporting. And he currently serves as the deputy director at the unit of studies and programming within the Haitian Ministry of Health. So today we're gonna hear um, probably about an apt subject, considering what we've been talking about the past couple of days at the symposium. I think we talk a lot about data for decision making, but that is much, much more easily said than done. Um, and over the past few years, health information systems have become a key component for the Haiti Ministry of Health. Um, we know that good data is a prerequisite for making informed public health decisions, but uh, despite kind of continuous improvements in data collection and aggregation um, throughout a health information system, it doesn't necessarily mean that we make better decisions. Um, so Najee and Rudy will be guiding us through challenges and successes and lessons learned on how the Haiti Ministry of Health has been able to use improvements to the national health information systems analytics to inform decisions at the clinical, departmental, and national levels. So without further Further ado, I will turn it over to Naji and Rudy. Um, thank you so much for joining us. And since I'm presenting the slides on your behalf, um, definitely let me know when to proceed to the next slide. Remember everybody to leave your questions in the Q&A and chat. Take it away. Um, hi everyone. Um, uh, thank you, Sarah, for the presentation, for the brief presentation of my path. And today we are going to, to talk about the data driving decision making at the whole at the whole level of the health Asian system. When you are talking about the, the level in Haiti, in the context of Haiti, we we, 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 we are talking about the SAT level, the department level, and the national level. Next slide, please, Sarah. Yes. What is the key learning objectives for this session? After this session, we hope that all particip participants will better understand challenges and success in using data in government decision making, examples of improvement to health information system, functionality and oper operability that lead to better data, dissemination and information use, how we can create a more formal structure for data analysis, dialogue and collaborative action can be used to institutionalize data driven decision making, um, team effort between the MOH, donors, financial and technical partners to ensure the sustainability of the system. Next. What is the definition that we keep in Haiti, what that we are using Haiti for the health information system? Uh, for us, the health information system is an articulated set of means, standards, 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 sorry, and procedures put it in place to collect, process, analyze, and interpret on a continuous basis reliable data in order to produce and disseminate information useful for making decisions. Timely at all levels in the planning, execution, monitoring, and evolution of health activities. What does that mean? Um, for the we, we, we use for the 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 you we use this definition to review all the health information system in Haiti, in Haiti, and to see what what is the 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 what is the way that we have to 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 take in order to perform a, a, a good health information system and in order to have the quality data quality and 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 and, and uh, a health information system that can can help the minister to to monitor to make monitoring and evaluation of the all of all the health program next please so um in haiti for all the data is a need 
because we are talking about uh, data evidence for decision making. So the Ministry of Health, of Health, sorry, needs data, needs that quality data, good quality data, to monitor the state of health of the population, to early detection of health problems, phenomena from the point of view of mobility, mortality, and determine, determining factors. Follow the national health policy in terms of programs and intervention implemented. Ensure the equi equitable distribution of health resources. Guide the investment in health of both national and inter international partners. Evaluate the impact of the programs in terms of service coverage and improvement of the health status of the population. Next. So, um, what is the Haitian context? For Haitian, for the mean, for the health information system in Haiti, we use uh, we, we we have two principal pillar. We talk about service. The first one is uh, statistic services. The second one, epidemiological surveillance, and the other one, the last one is um, statistic of resources. When when you, you when we talk about resources in terms in terms of statistics, we talk, we are talking about HR human resources. Uh, you, we, we, we 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 talk about drugs. We talk about uh, financial resources. Uh, national uh, is the French uh, translation of the half national account, and then we talk about medical materials and equipment. So we need we need a system that can. It help us to make monitoring and evaluation for 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 for, uh, for this domain in terms of such service that it, 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 for example how much how much internal care that we have for one year how much uh, maternal death at the site level what do we have in terms of epidemiological surveillance so when we need to know the the um um the 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 number of covid cases every day for example in terms of uh, statistics uh, in terms of uh, um statistics of resources we need to know for example where we can find an obstetrician where we can find a nurse and so on and so forth so for the health information system in Haiti we we, we use three pillars such as statistics epidemiological surveillance and the uh, statistics statistics of resources next slide so and we need to make a uh, we we made the review of all the information system because in AT um be, uh, before uh, 2014 we have a lot of challenge so for each program like nutrition vaccination HIV TB malaria a each program want to have his own report, his own um, health information system. That what we do is to make an assessment and to see what we can make an articulation between all the subsystem in order to have a, one system for the a, for the health information system for the Ministry of Health and to make the monitoring and the evaluation for health program. And one and that's it, and all the all that help us to to improve the data consistency, the data quality, and to have a data on time to make for decision making. So next slide. So what is the vision? When when we talk about CISNI, CISNI is the influence system the formation sanitaire national unique is a national unique information system that's the way we call the health information system Haiti. so what is the vision the vision is the it's a it's to have a system coordinated articulated and integrated and uh, uh, integrated so the guideline principle is consistency completeness complete completeness sorry efficiency and utility uh, and the system, the information system that can must help us to make the reconciliation of information at all level for analysis and management use, and the liaison between the, the link between the architecture of the HIS and the organization and coordination for for health services. Next slide. So it's the way that the information flow on the health system. When when you talk about when we when we are talking about. Uh, all level we, are, we talk about community level facility level um department level and national level so the data flow uh, the data begin flow to the community 
to the site level and the site level send the data to the department level they don't even make the data entry and then the 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 make the data treatment they make some analysis and after they validate the data and they, they send the data um to the national level for decision making that's the way the 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 the, the data flow for the health information system for in, in inside the health system of the ministry of, of health in haiti next slide so and then that's all about the vision about the data flow and about uh, the definition of the health information system in, in haiti that's called cisne um unique health information system so naji will go into talk about the ongoing progress that we do since 2014 until today Naji, the microphone is yours. Um, thank you, Wizzy. So for the ongoing process, we are going to talk about the service statistic where you have aggregated data. Since 2015, we have a new monthly report format that includes malaria indicators that were revised in 2019. We have more than 790 institutions that um, post um, um, data on DHIS2 that give a coverage of 95, 97%, including data for either pregnant women tested for HIV or number of HIV positive pregnant women. And we also have the interoperability between MERSI and CISNU, which are which is in, in place since 2018. Next, Sarah. For the individual data, we do on DHIS2, we do report the data for tuberculosis patient. When we start with around 30,000 uh, 30, um, patient TB, and now we are around the 60 um, TB patient. We will talk about it er, uh, later in this presentation. We also have the TB tracker that help with in three departments. We start with the pilot phase and the Northwest, Southeast and NIP um, department of the country where we could um, gather data for the community. Next. We also have the statistic resource where we have the SNADZI, which is the national system of, of supply and distribution, which is in French, the System National d'Approvisionnement et de la Distribution des Intrants. We also have collection and reporting tools, either the paper version that are validated by all the actors that are involved. And finally, we have the human resources with the existence of the SEGRH, which is the um, resource department that monitor all the MSPP staff around the country. Next. So what are the key achievements that we have in HIS? HIS is the Haiti Strategic Health Information System, and we are working together with EUP to have a better uh, health system in the country. We have the he health policy, that we have a draft that's been waiting to be disseminated. We have the support of the private for-profit hospital and clinic outside of PEFA or Global Fund. We have the main system. When we start, we start at the 2.26 version, and now we are at the version 2.33.6. And we also have the Casanita, which is a uh, the health map that can help either um, update the database by adding the new table for the management and um, the structure of the health system around the country. Next. Next, Sarah. So what is the goal of HIS? It's to strengthen the capacity of MSPP to take fully the ownership of uh, the health information system that improve the health outcome and the well-being of all Asians in the country. So we have two objectives. We have to build the capacity of MSPP, which is the Ministry of Health, to effectively implement and manage overseas and maintain a health system, and also develop the e-health policy. Next. So I, I did say that we start from 2.30 version of the aggregate data in, in CISNU to the 2.33.4 and for the tracker from the 2.28 to the 2.33.6. So we have new Wilcar TLC certificate, new container software for the Docker, new reverse proxy, 
uh, ETL transfer tool. And for the cut sanitaire, we are using the latest SPA from 2017 to make sure that we have all the coordination for the health institution. Next. That is the way that if you go on the MSPP site, you will see the cut sanitaire. Next, the health, the health map that I talked about before. And this is a picture showing the DHIS2 monthly report that we use, that has been used by every health institution, and they report those data to UOP. Next. The TB tracker, building on uh, existing tuberculosis routine um, cases with uh, UOP and PNLT, we make sure we enhance the TB tracker to have MDLTB, ENH, and contact tracing. So from the 266 um, TB institution that we have around the country, we have 33 of them that are reporting with the TB staff inside the site that are reporting through the TB tracker, the data, and the rest of the site, the one, the 233, they, their data are being reported by health institutions. So from 2017, like I said before, we start with 7,000 um, patients to now almost 60 patients with um, the Western Department representing 41% of the patient of the system. Next. You will see there a table showing the progression from the 7,000 in 2017, 30,000 to the almost 60,000 that we talked about. And here on your right, you will see how the TB tracker is being shown on the tablets and for the people to use. Next. And also this, that's showing you a female representation of TB patient, where we have in the Southeast uh, 49%, Central Plateau 48%, and Artibonit 47%. The department is what we call district in Haiti. Next. The HES tracker is the community health information system tracker that can track the, the, at the community level. Next. So we have 30 more community health workers for a total of 86 um, CH, um, community health workers, what we call the ISAP here in Haiti. They are uh, distributed in three health departments, Nordest, NIP, and Southeast and also an eight health facility. So until now, with this pilot phase, we track 4,186 clients, including 1,443 children. We also enhance the synergy between the DPSPE and UEP, which is two uh, direction and MSPP. We also make sure because we know like at remote area, um, the internet connection can be bad, we make sure that they have an online offline version and also the biometric authentication. Next. Digital health policy. Um, MSPP recognized the importance to develop an e-health policy based on principle of the host country. So that's the reason why during um, those following two years, we have been working with MSPP to have a document that can serve as a basic to engage all the stakeholders that are involved in the HIS in the country. So we have um, share a draft version document with MSPP and now we are waiting on them to publish it and then this will serve as a guide for anyone coming and want to use the um, e-health policy in the country to be referred to. Next. Expanding private sector reporting on HIV. So we also make sure that we advocate to have more complete um, data on HIV care and treatment through CISNU. So we engage with 135 private for-profit hospital and clinic outside of PEFAR and Global Fund to collect and track the data for HIV patients using CISNU system. So why we do that, we make sure that the reporting are more complete more comprehensive, expanding beyond the health institution while regarding engage with traditional donors, which is um, PEFAR or Global Fund. So this data that we have been collected, 
will be contributing to have a better follow-up, a better tracing and care for the patient living with HIV. Next. SEJL, which is the LMIS, is, uh, we work with a nonprofit organization called SHIFO to operationalize the integration between SEJL system and DHIS2. So the SEJL monthly report is used for data reporting on essential drug and laboratory inputs for the health institution and also the departmental supply center, what we call the Centre Departemental d'Approvisionnement en Intra, CDAI. So um, HIS, on technical team, and CHIFO, under the leadership of, of UEP, make sure that we have the latest version on DHIS2 and we can test it. And now it, this can be used at the departmental level. Next. So we also disseminated the 2018 and the 2019 annual statistical report, which is a report that can talk about everything health related to the country. And this picture you can see Woody with um, the director of UBA representation of USAID and, and me and the um, COP of the project. And also the Ministry of Health up next. So this is a picture representing what is CISNU, what is the vision, and what MSPP is aiming to CISNU to be. Next. What are the challenges? Because we talk about a lot of things that we do, but we know there's also challenges and everything that you want to do. So there's a there's not a lot of people using the data for continuous improvement of the program quality. We also have retention of human resources, effective ownership of CISNU by the departmental or the central um, direction of MSPP, compliance with collection and reporting standards and procedures, using data for decision making, the culture to use data, maintenance of hardware and IT equipment, and also taxation of technical and financial partners. Next. So I am will leaving you finish my um, presentation with this quote. The survival of CISNU is development, is improvement, is in nourishment, depend on the participation and involvement of all the actors and the health system. And this either at the community level, site level, departmental level, and the central level. Thank you so much for your time, and we are waiting for your questions. Wow, thank you so much. This has really been like a sweeping presentation, um, sharing so much from across your experiences with the, the Haiti and the HMIS. Um, I'm going to stop sharing my screen so we can see your beautiful faces for the Q&A. One moment. Wonderful. So I have a few, there are some questions coming into the chat. I selfishly kind of have a few myself. Um, you know, something that struck me in terms of DHIS2 is that, you know, you started out using DHIS2 as a, a really traditional HMIS with aggregate reporting. Um, and it seems like now you're extending more into using Tracker for community health workers um, and seemingly for some LMIS work, things like that. Um, can you kind of share a little bit about, I mean, it sounds like some of those are still still kind of nascent. Um, and I'm thinking about your, your last slide there saying that it, you need so much buy-in from stakeholders. Um, <laughs> can you share a little bit? Oh, I think we lost you, Najee. Can you share a little bit, Rudy, about um, you know the process of getting buy-in for these types of things? Because it really does seem like you're having to work throughout all levels of the health system. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, what we did, uh, at, at the beginning, we used the DHS2 for aggregate data for the monthly report for the HMIS. So after we have a lot of requests for the or, or for the other programs at the Ministry of Health, for, for the TB program, for example, and for the health community programs. So what we made is uh, we make, uh, we when I'm talking about the vision, so we have uh, several like a warehouse, a data warehouse. Okay, and, and we use a server for individual data, 
any reservoir for the aggregate aggregate data. For the HMIS, for the LMIS, it's aggregate data. We have a specific server for that. And for the TB tracker, for the health community information system, we we use individual data. Mm -hmm. So what we what we did, what we did, and it is the reason why I'm talking the 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 um the interconnection between system and the and we have the warehouse where all the database where all with the database that we use we can with with one account we can see aggregate data for the for the uh, for the we can see data for the aggregate data information system and we can see aggregate data come from the uh, individual uh, uh, database have system so with the Huawei's we aggregate all the data uh, for come from each each system the aggregate system and the individual system for example we can sometimes we can we can make a um we can make data consistency 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 for example between the laboratory laboratory data who is an aggregate data and the, the number of cases of tb for example mm -hmm. so, so we have a data there always that the vision we have a data was all how where we put all the data all those data so those so those databases, individual and the individual database, aggregate database that that is 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 managed separately, and we, we inside the warehouse, the data warehouse, so we can access to to each system when you want. Wow! Using yeah. confidential for for the individual data, using com, com, confidential rules, uh, for that. Yeah. Yeah, makes sense, and I I think that sort of goes back to some of the earlier presentations we had today at the symposium around sort of um, having data from multiple sources, but bringing it all together in order to, to be able to analyze it. Um, I see a question that says, actually, this was my question as well. Can you speak more about the process implemented to engage and get buy-in from the private sector for reporting into the CSNU? Um, specifically, the use case that was cited was around um, sort of outside of traditional HIV funders like PEPFAR, the Global Fund. Um, and I currently work on a PEPFAR project and we're sort of facing the same thing from the PEPFAR side of things is that it's very hard to get a, a picture of, of national epidemic status if you're just looking at the facilities that are publicly funded. You know, you're missing a lot if you're not uh, seeing private facilities or non-PEPFAR funded or non-global fund funded facilities. Can you speak a little bit how you got the private sector to buy into your national uh, HMIS? At the beginning, we talk about information needs. So like Ministry of Health, what, what we did, we have, uh, we, 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 we asked like Ministry of Health, what I need to know. In terms, we, we put all the information needs in terms of indicators. We have a, a, a list of indicators. And what we did at there is it was very difficult to have all the partners on the same table to validate to validate the 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 the, 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 the indicator list and to have a consensus indicator list. So and for each indicator, we have uh, we see which system we, we will use to calculate this indicator with go to to call the data to help us to calculate this indicator and after what we did and 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 with the consensus with, with the indicators and the data sources but if if we, we if we have if we have the consensus for the for the indicator for for each indicator and we that helps that's fast that that uh, that that help us to 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 is uh, to to identificate easily the data sources what is the data sources and when we have all the partners we have global phone web bank prefer <laughs> with this inside this consensus so we make the review of all the tools or all the the tools that we will use to make the data to to to, to collect data in order to have all the indicators and then uh, um um the opportunity that we have those partners support private sector institution and then they, they help us to 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 collaborate with uh, um, um private institution at the department level at the site level to have a, a, a regularly every every five of the month before of the month after for sorry uh all the reports but now we have a, a um we have a a, 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 a coverage of 95 percent uh wow. of the report available 
So what we are working on it very hard right now is the data consistency. It's not the user. Wow, impressive. So 95% coverage then? Yeah, every year, every year. Yeah. That's very impressive. And totally agree that, uh, you know, once you have that coverage, I think the, the challenge is quality and consistency. So yeah, I think many here true. would echo your, your concerns. Um, another question, you know, both you and um, Naji spoke a bit about the development of the e-health strategy for PT um, and gaining consensus there. Sort of what is the status of that and what have been kind of the challenges in developing that e-health strategy? Um, it sounds like you guys have been pretty instrumental in that. <laughs> yeah, for the EF strategy, the problem is the for the community health workers, and and the the, the first challenge is it was the level of education. So we have uh, we, we we are talking about Haiti. So on the on the on the on the on the outside on the countryside, on the countryside, the level of education is very very low. So and the, and and we for the year of strategy we use tablet, and then internet, and and the and the country said that the internet is not working properly. So that was the challenges. So when you even though we make training, we train the the, the have community community workers, we train them we, we train them how to use the tablet, how to to make the upload of the data, how to collect the data. So for because the the level of education is very low. It was very, it, it was, it's still very, very difficult to have the, the quality of the data that we need and so on and so forth. So it's the, the cha two challenges is the level of the of the education of the health community workers and if the the quality of the internet and the last one, the last one is the politic, politic. <laughs> the, 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 the context, the politic context of Haiti, it's very difficult. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I I think probably many others can sympathize in sort of working at the national level with health systems. There's you know there's the technology piece which can be hard, but probably the people in the processes part is is harder than the actual technology itself. Um, so I think you spoke there to some of the the other questions in our chat around conformance and consistency and data quality. Um, others are asking sort of about the types of analysis that have been done. So I know you mentioned um, sort of layering TB cases on top of other health statistics. What is kind of the, the main driver of your, your analytics then that you're pulling out of, um, out of your health information system? Sorry, sorry. Um, what has been the main focus of the analysis that you're taking? Ah, uh, yeah. So, so, so is the reason I, 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 I talk about indicators for the TB program. If, for example, we have key indicators, key indicators that we need to to manage the program in Haiti. Key indicators we have to share with Global Fund, with with Global Fund, with all the partners um, that we that support them to 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 take in charge the the, the TB passion. So using those indicators, we make um, every three months a report and every year an annual report. So using the key indicators, key indicators for the program management, key indicators to share with partners. I don't know if I which one old I, I, I will answer all the questions or I miss something. Hello. Hello? Sorry about that. I yeah. hit the button. Yeah, no, I think I think that's helpful. I think sharing that there's that core set of indicators is is um, a good a good uh, indication of the the main focus of what type of analysis well, you all are doing. For the data, I would like to add for the data consistency. What we what we did is uh, we have uh, um, uh, data validation rules that we use to validate to val to, to to make the validation of each report for each system. So it's 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 the is the that rules that help us to 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 assess the quality of the data that we receive from the department and the SAC level. Wonderful, wonderful. Yeah. I think that is most of the questions that have come into the chat. This really was like an expansive presentation. So thank you so much for sharing the the experience of, of Haiti as HMIS and of working with the ministry and collaborating with all these stakeholders. I think it's been really instructive to, to a lot of us. Um, 
we are at the last session of the day. So if there are no more questions, I just want to give you a big round of applause, Rudy and Najee, although I think she's dropped off. I hope you can hear our virtual applause from this session. I know we've all appreciated it.